Welcome to Identity Church Sunday Morning Message, where our sonship is revealed. Stay tuned at the end of this message to receive more information about resources available through Identity Church. Now grab your Bible, sit back, and enjoy a message from Identity Church that is already in progress. Listen, uh, a couple things that I've, I've, I'm putting on little cards and stuff on my dashboard and on my car, just for visual re- reminders. God is... God is light, God is life, God is love. He lives inside of me, so I must have light, life, and love. And if I will keep that as a focus, okay, if I keep that as a focus, and see, that becomes an ego thing, because if I keep that as a focus, I think I've won. No, but if I keep that as a focus, I'll find areas that I need help. So if I find an area that I'm... I'm, I'm, I'm wandering in darkness. I need to find out why. If I'm wandering and I'm, and I'm, I'm focusing on the, on the negative things, why? Because, because that's not love and that's not life. So I need to make those corrections and directions and changes. <clears throat> so here's, here's some things. I put this on Facebook this week. So it's, it's the gospel. <laughs> if I put it on Facebook, it's God. <laughs> Um, God cannot change your mind. He can only change your heart. But if you'll change your mind, God will change your heart. You can't change your heart. Only God can change your heart. But God can't change your mind. Only you can do that. You, 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 you submit to have your mind renewed. This is the renewing of the mind. So, so as you say, I'm willing to change my mind, you let God change your heart. Okay, so 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 that's great. Isn't that a great quote? All right, let me add this one. God will offend your mind to expose your heart. Oh, wait a minute. That's just as much God as the first part. The problem is, is we're so mamby pamby as Christians, we don't want to be offended. And as soon as you're offended, you go, this isn't God. And you sit back into your seat and your perspective, and you don't see what you need to see. Susie and I went to Miami, uh, left Friday afternoon. Um, Susie, Susie's got one of these complicated vehicles that's got... And she had a button that she pushed that said that I was cheap and did not want to pay tolls. <laughs> so I'm going with her GPS, and I'm cheap and not want to pay tolls. It's her button, not mine. I'm not cheap. But you know what happens when you're trying to go down to Homestead and you don't want to pay tolls? It takes you to I-95 and you go to the end of I-95, right downtown, and it dumps you on US-1 and Old Dixie, and I'm seeing the portions of Miami I never wanted to see in my life. In 5 o'clock traffic. i got to tell you, I had a moment to be offended. Now, Now listen. So, so, so I'm going to give you a picture of being double-minded. So I'm like, this stupid thing. I didn't figure out she had the wrong button pushed till the next day. So I'm getting on the cell phone. Well, Google knows what to do. So I got one GPS telling me to turn left, and I got the other one telling me to turn right, and Susie's finally going, pick one. Just pick one and follow it. And, and I'm, I'm, I always hedge my bets, so I picked the wrong one. And it takes me a block this way, it takes me around the circle, and dumps me back where the other one told me to go. So she finally says, I'm turning it off. I heard the Lord say, there's your lesson. Turn something off and follow whatever. Needless to say, I was offended. <clears throat> we, we went to Miami through invitation, actually some friends of Patty that have just fell in love with me because Patty told, me, told them I was lovable. And uh, they've showed up and just have really activated my real calling to deal with racism in America. And we were invited to do home church. We were the only Caucasian people there. (laughs) 
And so we had dinner with the core group Friday night, and they started asking me questions about our nation and the election process, and they're very concerned. They sit in a different seat than I sit in. How do you answer something you're not familiar with? You take the deep breath and go, okay, God, do I really get into this and throw my opinion out there? And I heard the Lord say, a prophet when an opinion is dangerous, you better speak for me. And I was delicate as I possibly could on what I felt our nation has been. And I, basically, I said, listen, there's nobody in my church that has ever heard me disrespect President Obama. I've never, I, I may not agree with politics of a person, but you do not disrespect the office. And I believe many Christians are sideways with God because we have lack of respect and honor for the office. And I'll tell you, God is not going to tolerate that forever. And he's not going to tolerate it where we're going right now either. And it was very, it was interesting. So they, they set me in front and beautiful worship. And, and, and I start sharing the hats message on sonship and identity. And, and there's, there was an individual there that is an attorney um, whose real focus is dealing with those who are being mistreated with racism. And <clears throat> I, came to the, I came away, I laid in bed last night, and I'm like, what is this? And he says to me, he says, about eight or ten different situations with people that become advocates for the unjust. You become an advocate for those that are abused. You become an advocate. In other words, you see an injustice. But the problem is, is if, if, if you take on the offense, right. your advocacy, you, being an advocate, can become demonic. Right. It's, if it's not based in love, I don't care how much you try to defend somebody. The statement was made, oh, I can hug you. You've repented for racism. Let me tell you something. You should hug me even if I'm still racist. If you know who you are, if you know who you are, my racism should not stop your love. Oh, but when we only sit in our seat, we have our opinions, and our opinions become bitter roots of judgment. Oh, I, can, I haven't even started. And, and, and listen, I was received, and listen, the, the, the black culture is a different culture than I'm used to. I'll tell you what I do like about their culture. When I started prophesying over them, they kept putting stuff, things in my pocket. I've never been more blessed in my life. I wanted to prophesy. Susie's like, go back and prophesy some more. <laughs> they know honor. They know honor. And listen, it wasn't buying a prophecy. It was honor. Okay, We could learn some things. First of all, some of us don't know how to receive honor because we don't think we're worthy of honor. That's your own issues. We'll talk about that in another meeting. But, but, but at the same time, I, I was trying not to be prophetic because I really wanted to, to lay out sonship and identity. And, and it kept going because all, most of them have read my book. And, the, and most of them want to know about the racial issues. Well, our nation is in, is in divide right now. Our nation is divided right now. And if you sit in my seat, they're wrong. Come on. I'm an angry white voter, as far as they're concerned. But from my seat, if that's the way I approach what God's doing, I won't ever become part of the issue to fix it. I won't be part, I won't fix it. You're going to have to get out of your seat and get into his seat. Otherwise, you can't bring people out of their seat that is opposing you. <clears throat> and, and the questions, in both meetings, the questions went there. Basically, I'm going to just kind of roll it down. Basically, hey, white man, what are you going to do about it? But that's their seat. That's their culture. And I'm going to tell you something. 
They're afraid. These are, these are honest, God-fearing people who are feeling a shaking in our nation, and they're not sure how it's going to wind up. They're not. I, I, I walked away, and I went, you know, De- Debbie, it's, it's from my seat. Up until just yesterday, I couldn't see. I disqualified and discounted their fears. Then what kind of leader am I going to be if I ignore that? I had to address it. Listen, if the, if, the, if, the, if the new administration coming in doesn't deal in the whole entirety of the nations, the culture groups, with, with, with love and respect, dude, I'm going to start shouting it. But I'm not going to pick out one or two isolated innocents and, and, and just label everybody either. But somebody's going to have to step up and stand up and see it from a different perspective and become a healer. <clears throat> the problem is, is if you are still dealing with a root of bitterness, your advocate, being an advocate for that will become your cause and you won't walk in love. And you won't have the ability to tell them the truth because they've only been sitting in their seat and not looking at the whole picture either. In other words, we are not, we're not earning the ability to speak truth. Because as Christians, it's truth that sets you free. Not your truth. His truth. Come on now. I've never been more respected, never been honored like I was. But I walked away and I said, you know, I preach the gospel according to Charlie. Too much of the time. But I'm supposed to be a gospel preacher for all people. The thing was... Oh, now that you've repented of racism. And, 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 and there was a pushback. There was a public pushback. You know, well, you know, from reading your book, white people didn't receive your message. That's true. But that was before Barack Obama was our president. I walked around this nation and says, America needs to prepare for black leadership from a vision I had, an encounter I had in Africa. And what did God, here's the thing. It wasn't received. In, in, in 96, in 97, 99. But I preached it because I had an encounter telling, and I told people, this is where the nation's going. And they all thought, ah, eh, who cares? You know, we had promise keepers. A bunch of white people got with a bunch of white people and said, we're sorry. It's over with. Oh, really? That's just a start. It's just making people uncomfortable. Truth will not make you uncomfortable. It will set you free. So when President Barack Obama gets elected, I have prophecy that says it. You know what the problem is? I don't like his politics. But I got a prophecy that I repeat on God's behalf. Get ready for black leadership. I didn't vote for him. I don't like his politics. But God chose to put him in that office. Whether you liked it, whether you didn't like it. Listen. We've been in in Walmart when he first got elected and have every African American across Walmart go, Obama! Well, I'm the white guy between you two. And I had to make a choice to be respectful or disrespectful. I had a choice. Am I going to represent the kingdom of God or my politics? Do you believe God is sovereign and God is in control? And everybody in the room going, yes. I said, I believe God put Obama in the White House, allowed him to be in the White House to finish some assignments and to finish a sin characteristic of of our nation. But that's about to end. Now what are we going to do? We are more divided. We're more separated. Less loving as a nation than we've ever been. 
I said to that group, there's no greater sin than for you to commit the sin that was committed against you. If you think you've been committed, racism been, has been committed against you, get along with God, make sure who you know who you are, and then heal the next guy that tries it. Instead of being another victim, another wound, and another false voice of an echo of your own pain of bitterness. And that's not a racial statement, that's a human statement. <laughs> I guess I should get to my message. Here's the problem. Listen, for the first time in my life, I sat in this, in this house, honored, respected, ate well too. I thought, man, you guys are better than the Baptists. They can cook, man. They fed me like, forget about it. The host is the son of um, the lady who put it on. He comes up to me. He hasn't been in church in a while. He says, uh, I, haven't heard, I haven't heard God like this in a long time, but I heard God today while you're teaching. I said, yeah, what did he say? As I was listening to you, the Holy Spirit said to me, I'm going to show you a different side of the kingdom you've never seen. <laughs> Dude, that broke me. Here's a guy who's abandoned church, who loves God, but, yeah, you know, his mama probably wants to beat him around the head, neck, and shoulders, but that's okay. Mama's mama. But he loves God, and he, have, and he says, I heard God. Now, I'm going to show you a side of the kingdom you've never seen. That's the same thing you said different perspective is God sovereign I'm telling you if we can get past some of our bitternesses the bitter root judgments and we can love each other even disagree with each other but love each other God's going to heal our land So I woke up this morning. I said, what, what, do I, what do you want me to teach on? He says, the very thing I showed you. The bitter root. This is a simple teaching. It may not be quick, but it'll be simple. The sycamine tree. You guys have probably have read this scripture many, many times. <clears throat> but if you want to be an age changer, if you want to change this nation, you're going to need power. I'm going to need power to, dude, there's this, I prayed for this guy. He was huge. He had to be 450 pounds, and he was big, and, and, and I didn't even see him. He was sitting off in the kitchen, and he heard me speak, and, 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 and I, I said, God, what do I do? And he said, just, just hug him. I'm going to fix him. You want me to prophesy? No, I just told you to hug him. I hugged this big guy. Something broke on the inside of him. I, I could feel him. Be, all of a sudden, love melted something. And I felt a shift in him. I saw him tear up. I saw. Everybody knew who he was. I don't know who he was. Afterwards, they're going, dude, I can't believe he let you do that. I'm like, you have no idea who I'm carrying. <laughs> Love breaks those barriers. Yeah. I didn't prophesy. You're going to be a great prophet one day. I said, no, God loves you. You haven't let him love you in this area. And I started whispering the area that God was fixing. I was driving. Susie was driving home. I was lounging. I said, God, what about that guy? He said, son, I've been trying to heal him for a long time. But his bitterness toward white men was the thing I'm after. So I used you in a skin color that he's resisted to heal the very thing he's been crying for. Wow. See, he had to release something on the inside. I felt it released from the man. Now, I felt the emotions click. I felt the anointing come. And I walked away, and God said, listen, how many promises of healing 
and deliverance do you need? But because of your bitterness toward that group that I gave them the answer, can you not receive? <laughs> Mountain moving power. <clears throat> For surety I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, <clears throat> be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you will have them. This is Mark chapter 11, verse 23 and 24. And whatever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, 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 Yeah, I told a story yesterday. I said, listen, I, I got over the white-black thing. I'm doing pretty good with that. I said, I, I struggle with Asians. And they're all looking at me like, me too. Because, <laughs> you know, it's a third group that isn't there. And I just made the statement, I struggle with Asians. Well, I'm sure their mind went concocted. Of, he must be this. He must. No, I struggle with them because I can't communicate. And, and this is, God has worked on me over the years because I'll get around Asians like at McDonald's and they're going, shing, yang, 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 and they're ordering their Mickeys and all that. And, and I will be prompted by God to love them somehow. And I'm, if, if I can't talk, I can't love. That's my opinion. So I sit off in the corner and I start talking in tongues. I'm waiting for God to, to use my tongues to talk to them so they can get saved. I'm just practicing. Because it's going to happen one day. I'm just practicing. God help me. But what is he prompting me to do? He's prompting me to love them. And I... Bring it down to, I must communicate with them. Yeah. My brain. So about two weeks ago, sure enough, there's three Chinese, I don't know, they all Chinese, Japanese, Taiwan, Korean. They, I don't I got them all lumped up. I'm sorry. And I hear this, love them. I'm going, sing, shan, chan, 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 sing, sing. Lord said, shut up. <laughs> Just shut up. Well, m m Mama gives me a McDonald's credit card that does just McDonald's for my coffee and stuff. And they were ordering coffee. Just love them. God loves you. Oh, sing, 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 sing. I didn't ask you to communicate with them. I told you to love them. But am I so, so stuck in having to speak the word of the Lord versus love them? And whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive them. For your Father in heaven may also forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father in heaven forgive your trespasses. So what he's saying is, is, is that you need mountain moving power. What is that mountain? I can't communicate, but he said love. But Lord, you know, that's just a crazy language. You know, God, they, I think they're talking about me. Because they go, and they're pointing at me, and they go, I'm like, I'm going to show you what a redneck does. You know? That's not love. <laughs> it's not breaking the barrier. Now. Am I the only one that does this? Am I the only sinner in this house? <laughs> Here's my point. I can do it to this group. I can do it to this group. But now there's something here. I've had to deal with it. So, so these were youth that I bought the coffee for. 
I'm like, what is in my heart? There's something that I've missed. And I'm sitting there eating my ice cream cone and coffee. <laughs> my three o'clock meal. <laughs> And I'm saying, God, why? what is it in me that triggers this that when you prompt me with Asians, I resist it? I mean, I, I, I could do it. I'm, I'm a loving guy. But what is it? And boom, it flashed me. I was in China. And we were downtown at the market. And three pickpockets got my camera. They set me, I was actually told to watch the ladies so the pickpockers wouldn't get them, and they rascals got me. They stole my camera. I, listen, I got mad. And I didn't realize how mad I got. To where anytime I see their culture, this thing would trigger. To the point where I couldn't love them. I wanted to tell them a prophecy. First of all, I wanted to make sure they knew I was from God and did something supernatural so they wouldn't hurt me or pickpocket me again. Yeah. Protection. Protection. So we pull our God card because we don't really want to love on our own. And I realized I had to repent. And, and, and you say, that's simple. No. That's spiritual. That's right. What is it in there that when he said, go love them, I wrestled with God for several years. That was 2007 I was in China. And I realized in about 2000, I had a vision. In this vision, I was in this church, and there was this whole Korean section. And I went off into their language, and they all got saved. And so this has kind of been a calling thing with that culture group. And then I had that happen. And now I've resisted loving that culture group. Doesn't the enemy always try to get you bitter toward the one you're supposed to heal? So let me ask you a question. If that is a principle, if you find out what you're bitter against, it might be actually a symbol or a sign of your calling. Could that work? But you're not going to have mountain moving power unless you deal with your unforgiveness and your bitterness. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father in heaven forgive you your trespasses. <clears throat> then he said to his disciples, it is impossible that no offenses should come. Listen, when they, when they stole my camera, I got offended. This group said to me, we're, we're trying to figure racism out. And I finally said to this group, I said, do you understand when I became racist? I said, Matthew chapter 24 says this way, many will become offended and fall away from the faith. Anytime you fall away from being able to love somebody, you have now fallen away from the faith. So we want to make that so big, oh, well, he's still going to go to heaven. He's a horse's butt and hates half the people group. I'm, I'm going to question you. Love is the standard, the requirement. You, you have to, God don't play with, he's not going to, right, that's a whole, we won't go there. But, but, but many will become offended and fall away from the faith. And so there's all these people looking at me as the new racism healing expert. And I'm like, do you know how I got offended to where I became a, a certified racist that God had to heal me? I said, no, I said, I was in fifth grade. In fifth grade, I got in trouble in my classroom. I had to sit in the hallway, which is pretty common for me in fifth grade. So I'm sitting in the hallway having my own little tutoring session. And Gwendolyn Jones, a black little girl, that she had a crush on me. And in fifth grade, you don't tell people you throw rocks. Right. And she threw a rock at me. It was, it was a love rock. <laughs> and so I picked it up, and I threw my love rock back at her. Except I got caught throwing the rock. And this African-American teacher grabbed me by my ears and drug me down to the African-American dean who had a paddle about that big. Well, what happened? 
Well, I was sitting and thinking, well, you got in trouble? And yeah, I was sitting and thinking, and, and this colored girl threw a rock at me. Fifth grade, Southern, no one told me, no one gave me the memo that, that you aren't supposed to call an African-American colored anymore. They wanted to be called black. And they mocked me. Two African-American adults mocked me for calling her colored. In fifth grade, they offended me. And that offense started the whole enchilada. Turned into a root of bitterness, turned into a demonic spirit of racism, and I, and I would judge the color. But here's... I said, don't worry, from now on, I'll call you, and I use the N-word. You'll know who I'm talking about. And in fifth grade, I made a decision to let my offense dictate my ability to love. So what has offended you? And I'm sitting in a room going, what white teacher offended you? What white policeman offended you? What white authority did to you what was done to me at four and five and six, fifth grade, six, whatever? You might have to go find out about who's been picking your pockets. But woe to them to who they come from. Listen, do you know that my, that teacher repented 15 years later? When she heard my story. It would be better for him to have a millstone hung around his neck. And he were thrown into the sea. Than he would offend one of these little ones. And he's. <clears throat> Take heed to yourself. If your brother sins against you. Rebuke him. And if he repents. Forgive him. And if he sins against you seven times in a day and seven times in a day returns to you saying, I repent, forgive him. Seven times a day. That's 490. It ain't going to happen. Here's what I said. And the apostle said to the Lord, increase our faith. What, is it? what are they saying? I am not humanly possible to forgive you that many times. But if that's the requirement, I'm going to have to do it supernaturally. Increase my faith. Increase my faith. So the Lord said, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you can say to this sycamine tree, be pulled up by the roots and be planted in the sea, and it will obey you. What he's saying, he said, if you have faith, in other words, if you have no forgiveness in your heart, your heart's pure before God, and there's no issues with you and man, if you have faith of a mustard seed, you could tell the sycamine tree, be pulled up by the roots and be cast into the sea. Now that's power. Isn't that what we're all looking for? Yes. Power to change. Power to move the mountain. Power. That's power. And he's talking specifically, this sycamine tree. Keep in mind that Jesus was speaking in, uh, what he was speaking about in Luke 17, 1 through 6. Offenses will come. Getting rid of bitterness and unforgiveness. Forgive those who sin against you. Forgiveness on steroids. Seven times a day. You know, at six, we go to marriage counseling. It's the seventh one that we don't even care anymore. There we go. Can only be done by faith. All right, this is a sycamine tree. Look, look, at, look at that gnarly thing. That is a Israeli sycamine tree right there. This tree. This is when Jesus this is when Jesus began to teach the disciples about speaking to bitterness and unforgiveness. He said, "If you had faith as a grain of mustard seed, he might say unto this tree, he's speaking specifically to this tree." This is equivalent to Jesus telling them bitterness and unforgiveness are just like the sycamine tree. And if you really want to be free of these attitudes, you can speak to these 
speak to this, are just like the sycamine tree. And if you really want to be free from these attitudes, you can speak to this menace growth in your life and command it to be planted into the sea. This is what he's saying. He says, listen, what is defiling you is just like this tree. Look at this tree. What is def- bitterness and unforgiveness is just like this tree, but it's growing in your heart. Characteristics of the sycamine tree. Sycamine tree is very large and deep-rooted in structure. That's what bitterness, it gets deep-rooted. It started in fifth grade. It manifested heavily at 23, 25, 26, 28. Its roots went to so deep, so it's very hard to kill. That's why some of us only trim the top of the tree. We don't ever pull the root out. And then we wonder why we're numb and unproductive. <clears throat> Bitterness and unforgiveness must be dealt with clear to the roots, or they keep springing up again and again in different forms with different things. It can live in dry places with little water. That's why you hide in churches with no real anointing. That's why you avoid the real prophets that might pull it out for you. Brother, I need a word from God. Mm, you don't want that one. Okay, that's a root pulling word right there, baby. I, I, have, I had a lady, I really need it. I said, You really want to hear it? Yeah, I really want to hear it. Go home and submit to your husband and shut up. Well, that ain't God. Oh, well. She still doesn't talk to me. But I knew it was God. And she was bitter toward her husband. Any, you know, started with other authority, went to her husband. Oh, well, there's your root problem. You can't kill it. The enemy lives in dry places without the water of the word. Come on now. It's the preferred wood for building caskets in Israel. It grew quickly and is near into almost any environment. So bitterness is not a cultural thing. It's a human thing. It also grows best in dry conditions. Bitterness grows quick in dry places when allowed to grow freely. It will spoil the condition of the heart and ruin the relationships with other people. If you permit bitterness and unforgiveness to grow in your life, it won't be long until these attitudes have killed your joy, stolen your peace, and canceled out your spiritual life. Jesus is, is what? Jesus is light, Jesus is life, and Jesus is love. The kingdom of God is what? Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. If you don't have joy, you don't have the kingdom, and it may be a root of bitterness stealing it. Bitterness will put you six feet under. That's why it builds caskets. Here, here, little. I'm going to do that again. The sycamine tree and mulberry bush were very similar in appearance. The two trees even produce a fruit that look identical. You will know the tree by its fruit. The sycamine tree is so bitter you could not eat it all at once. You only nibbled on it. (laughs) Listen to this. (laughs) The poor eat the sycamine tree and the wealthy eat the mulberry figs. Jesus wants you to prosper And what? Eat mulberry figs, not sycamine. This bitter attitude not only makes them spiritually poor, but they are also frequently defeated, depressed, sick, and financially poor as well. That's what bitterness will do. Only wasps pollinate the sycamine tree. The sycamine tree is not naturally pollinated. Jesus is saying this is what bitterness and unforgiveness is. It's not naturally pollinated. It doesn't reproduce naturally. So you have to make an effort to let it grow. You have to make a conscious effort not to walk in faith and forgive. You have to make a conscious effort. I'm never going to let this thing sting me again like that. The tree and fruit had to be stung in order to be reproduced. I don't... I have to love you. I don't have to like you. Well, there's a root somewhere, baby. 
<clears throat> what he did hurt me so bad, I'll never let him get close enough to sting me again. Did you become a man hater? It goes the other way too. Any person who has even a tiny measure of faith can speak to bitterness and unforgiveness and command them to leave. If that is really the desire of your heart. The problem is it's really not the desire of our hearts. In other words, God says, I've given you all the tools to get rid of it. The problem is we don't really want to. Why? Because bitterness protects me. It's still a tree and it still gives me shade. It just doesn't give me life. That's good preaching, Chuck. Thank you very much. If it is really desire of the heart, there's the key. See, if you don't speak to your emotions, they will speak to you. If you don't take authority over your emotions, they will take authority over you. If you don't raise up and conquer your flesh, it will raise up and conquer you. So quit letting your emotions tell you what to think, what to do, and how to react. It's time for you to do the talking and to take command of your own thought life. Listen, it may be as simple as, God, I can't get to this group. Why? You're still holding bitterness because three punk teenagers pickpocketed you. And listen. God, are you telling me that is the source? That I let three punk teenagers play me? It was a red Kodiak, a Kodak camera. That is only worth, uh, I, I actually replaced it that day in China. Got a good deal on the new one. Because they made it there. It just didn't have the SIM card with all my little pictures on it. So, so I mean, I'm talking about like I replaced it for like 70 bucks, 60 bucks. It wasn't, okay, are you telling me, God, are you telling Charlie Coker that I let a $60 theft keep me from a people group? He said, no, it's much more valuable than that. I said, what's more valuable? What, what's the root here? He said, what did Peter ask you to do? Oh, my God. Are you kidding me? You asked. Are you kidding me? You asked. He asked me to protect the girls so they wouldn't be pickpocketed. And they made fun of me. I couldn't do what I was asked to do. And the Lord says, by the way, you did it. He said, the girls didn't get pickpocketed, you did. <laughs> but you took the, the mocking personal I'm like it wasn't even the pickpocket it was the mocking and I'm a funny guy because I would have tore me up if it was me when someone tells me to go do something I do it but I felt like I had failed I didn't feel, he's like, you didn't fail. The girls didn't get nothing stolen. You did. But you took it personal when they made fun of you. Dude, I started going through my life. I'm like, how many times have I felt that? I've been, I used, my wife, this is part of the funny part of things. Susie hates to go shopping with me. And, uh. She says, what was it like going shopping with your mom? I says, I hated it. And we found out why. Because we had to shop in the Huskies department. And they called me fat. I didn't want to be fat, but I'm fat. And I took it personal. And I, I took it to where there was things in my heart. 
I don't think you can find it without the Holy Ghost showing it to you. But are you willing to see it? Are you willing to repent for it? Are you willing to get clean enough and clear enough so God can use you to love the Asians? The African American, the Hispanic, the broken. Listen. What about God telling you to go love that autistic kid that's at McDonald's and he's going, eh, eh. But you don't want to be seen loving that kid. And you hear God saying, go love that kid. I've, I've crossed that barrier. And I go and I love that kid. And you see the parents going, thank you. Right. Have the parents go, most people are so afraid. Yeah. They won't even love him. Yeah. And this parent's been taking care of that kid. Going out in public and he's, he's being him. But we shun them all. Because I don't want to be associated. I don't want to have to do that. But we're Christians, and they'll know this for our love for one another. As long as you're not Asian, as long as you're not disability, you have a disability, as long as you're not real fat, you know, half fat, I can handle. But I, unless, you know, what's your list? What is your list? What is your list? What is your list? What is your list? I want, I want the, I want the broken, I want the broken kid who doesn't act normal to be able to come here and us act normal. And love the mom and love the dad who, who, who's loving because God gave enough love and it's just a situation you can't fix. But do we love? Or are you too embarrassed about yourself? Listen, I believe that this, this, God's going to show us what's in us so that He can pour His love through us. But it starts with me, it starts with you. Does this make sense today? But I saw myself at this Miami meeting. And this lady pushed me for some answers. For the first time I could say to that group, listen, I was called to the ministry in an unusual way. God called me in a vision that I, that I was behind the Lincoln Memorial where Dr. King did I have a dream speech and I was in a security trailer. And it was three to four hundred thousand African Americans that I was getting ready to go speak to. And the Secret Service and the FBI came into this trailer and said, We have intelligence that if you speak what you're going to speak, they're going to shoot you. And I said to these agents, This is my life calling. I have to. I have to. And they says, well, then you need to wear this. And they made me put on a bulletproof vest. As I shared that yesterday, for the first time, I'm willing to put the vest on because I took the hardness from my heart off first. Because I've taken the hardness and the protection. Now I have enough love. Now I can put the vest on to protect my life, not my heart. I really don't want to get shot. Let's get, let's get, let's get to the point. I don't really want to be shot. But I do want to fulfill what God called me to do. That was to love people that at one time I never did. 
And I will never be able to understand him unless I change my seat and look from their viewpoint, feel their pain, and bring truth that will set all of us free. So you pull in your bulletproof vest on to keep from being hurt so you don't have to love? Or have you been willing to love and now it's just protection for life? Stand to your feet. Part of the message here, I said, are you willing? Are you willing to see the hidden root of bitterness? The problem is it's not so big that you know it probably. It might be so small you've been able to hide from it. Isn't it just like God to say, oh yeah, they pickpocketed me. Oh yeah, that's really not the problem. That was just a camera. You've been unwilling to be embarrassed for my sake. <laughs> but I want to love. Who wants to love? We're going to have to get rid of the bitter roots, guys. Put your hand over your heart. Say, Holy Spirit, examine me. Examine my heart. Expose my excuses. Give me the truth. Water me with your word. Heal me with your blood. And teach me to love. I choose to change my mind. So you can heal my heart. I give you permission to offend my mind so I can reveal my heart. And I present it to you to heal it. I will obey the doctor's orders and whatever you prescribe for my healing, I will obey. I will go to physical therapy. Emotional therapy, whatever is necessary to be healed so I can love people groups, individuals that one time I ignored. I love you, Jesus, and I thank you for what you're doing in my life. In Jesus' name. Thank you for tuning in to today's message from Identity Church. To know more about us, go to IdentityChurch.net, where you'll find resources such as a calendar, media, and upcoming events. You can also download an app for your mobile device from the Apple App Store or Google Play. Then from your mobile device, you can hear our messages, read the Bible, take notes, connect with us on social media, and even pay your tithe. Again, thank you for tuning in to Identity Sunday Morning Message, where sonship is revealed. Have a blessed day.